Hello and welcome everyone, Denzel Rodriguez here, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to use a home equity line of credit in the second position. I have a case study here on the board. We're gonna be looking at a uh, police officers and firefighters. This particular case study, you're gonna wanna pay close attention to, especially the type of bank that we're using. This particular bank that the home equity line of credit is at, in this case study, is Police and Fire Federal Credit Union. Okay, I don't know every state that they cover, but I do know that they're based in Philadelphia when I look on their website. The reason why I mention people in the police and fire department, as I'm building more and more clients all across the United States, I'm constantly seeing so many different unique ways that we can apply the velocity banking concept. And as it relates to people's careers and jobs, there are very unique credit unions, very unique banks that cater to specific crowds where you can get Get lower rates than everyone else especially military department police fire government employees you know if you're in the hospital industry like there's certain banks that cater to different jobs different careers so when we're looking for the right debt tool uh, to do velocity banking you can sometimes find a very competitive low interest rate on your debt tool to maximize results, right? Offset your interest costs of borrowing, increase cash flow faster, essentially paying off your debt that much faster because you did the extra steps. You did the velocity banking pregame work. You watched the playlists on all about the line of credit, giving you all the steps, all the tools, all the questions, all the pregame work that you need in order to effectively implement this concept. So with that being said, let's take a look at the board and let's dive right into this case study. So here we have the four major numbers, someone making eight eight thousand two hundred eighty dollars and six cents per month expenses are six thousand two twenty four thirty their total debt is at two hundred eighty six thousand two hundred five eighty nine with a net cash flow each and every month of two thousand fifty five dollars seventy six cents they have a home equity line of credit in the second position at that bank we mentioned police and fire federal credit union for a hundred thousand they previously had a fifty thousand dollar credit limit with the same bank and then they increased it to a hundred thousand the interest rate did go up so they were previously at 3.75 percent and because of the the high interest rate environment interest rates are going up so we do have a new interest rate at 4.75 percent simple interest here are the debts we've got one uh, loan two mortgages a credit card at zero percent another mortgage and then a second HELOC on another property on one of these other properties here so this person has two HELOCs total one is at 4.75 percent 100k the other one's at 6.74 percent and the credit limit is 50,000 so in this case when you're in a situation where you have maybe multiple debt tools sometimes it could be a little bit difficult to decide which one to use in this scenario it's pretty obvious the one that we want to do velocity banking with is typically the one with the lower rate maybe higher credit limit these HELOCs are actually at the same bank so if you're wondering why the rates different they were acquired at different times we're going to be using the first heloc here 100k 4.75 percent as our main debt tool before they became a client they already had an existing debt on it 40,972. so before we do velocity banking before we start chunking at debts we have to do velocity banking on the debt tool itself to knock the balance down to create some space you know, really make sure that we're not abusing the tool just because we have so much credit limit in comparison to the person's income and cash flow that may not make sense, right? So often what I'll do is I take the person's cash flow times that by 12, I take the credit limit times that by two thirds and I see the range, right? Our chunk range. So they're kind of like in that range right where the balance owed is at 40,000 so it's above what our cash flow times 12 is in a year and it's below two-thirds of the credit limit of a hundred thousand in this case you know two-thirds sixty plus thousand dollars is way higher than their cash flow times 12 we don't want to be over leveraging ourselves we want to put ourselves in a good position where we can completely offset that borrowing cost and put us in a position where we can make an effective chunk out of debt and increase our cash flow immediately so that whatever money we're moving into the line does not increase our borrowing costs right based on what is already owed so we do owe 
on the HELOC doesn't mean we have to wait to hit zero before we make the jump. And we're gonna find out what that range is and this will vary based on what we're trying to do. In this case, the person's goal is to pay off debt. That's what they wanna do. They wanna knock out debt extremely fast. They wanna increase their cash flow. They wanna save money on interest. So that's what we're gonna do. The first debt that we're looking at, the most attractive one, I actually went in order in terms of the debts that we're gonna hit. So starting with this loan, 17,951.40, monthly payment 787.25 cents, amortized at 12.49%. 12.49% is extremely higher amortized than 4.75 simple interest. So by simply moving that debt into the line is gonna put this person in a very good, healthy position. But I don't wanna do that right away. I don't wanna move that debt into the HELOC right away and increase my balance to over 67,000, right? That's breaching the max leverage in that line. The other thing I'm taking into consideration is that this person is brand new to the velocity banking concept. So I want to get their feet wet. I want them to get used to moving money in and out of the line of credit because this is a second position HELOC, it requires that we have a checking account as well. So when we're doing velocity banking with a home equity line of credit in the second position or a personal line of credit, it requires that you also have a checking account linked preferably at the same bank to increase efficiency, minimizing your interest costs of borrowing. In this case, we have our second lien HELOC right here and the checking account at the same exact bank. All my income, all my paychecks, all my bills are coming out of this checking account that's at the same bank as my second lien HELOC. What happens is on the days I get paid, it immediately, that paycheck immediately goes right into the HELOC that is considered a payment. So it satisfies the payment of whatever month I'm in for that HELOC. So there's really no payment ever due on the HELOC because you're always paying it in advance with your paycheck so paycheck lands moves right into the into the HELOC I now have a zero balance on my checking account from there I have a third account which is the credit card cashback rewards that can be used to run any and all bills that can be paid with a credit card. So we're swiping, we pull out the wallet, gas, food, miscellaneous, phone bill, you name it, anything and everything that can be paid with a credit card, we're gonna swipe it on that third account, that credit card right here. Getting cash back rewards, which is gonna help offset the borrowing costs over here, which means that my income can sit in the HELOC for a longer period of time, lowering that 4.75% rate down to less than 2%. Very powerful. So interest cost of borrowing is going down. Cashback rewards increasing. Less actual dollars have to come out of the HELOC to pay that credit card 25 days later when it's due. Any and all bills that cannot be paid with a credit card, like a mortgage payment, car payment, any other debt payments, right? Or any other bill that cannot be paid with a credit card, it's gonna come directly out of the checking account. But if your checking account's at zero, what do you do? You withdraw, transfer money out of the HELOC, what you need, only what you need and when you need it throughout the month, back into the checking account, checking account, pays the mortgage payment, pays the debt payment, pays the car payment, pays the student loan payment. Meanwhile, that third account, the credit card, is being used to swipe your bills right pretty clear coming back to the board here now this is what it's gonna this is what i'm illustrating here i'm looking at one year of doing velocity banking what it would look like right and you're gonna see how much faster and effective we move as it relates to just the traditional method of sending our cash flow at the end of the every month to the next smallest debt right which in this case would be this credit card right here which is at zero percent so when you're talking to most financial coaches that are taught the snowball method of smallest debt to highest debt, they're not looking at cash flow. They're not looking at interest. They're just looking at balance. Very one dimensional. Velocity banking looks at all the dimensions, all the situations. We're open minded. We're critical thinkers. We're evaluating everything that's on the board. All of our cards are on the table and we're running the numbers of each scenario. So that can be very advantageous when you're a critical thinker, you think for yourself, you're open-minded, you challenge the norm, allows you to think way outside the box. So instead of hitting a debt that's at 0% just because it's the smallest debt, we're looking at 
cash flow, interest savings, then balance. That's typically the route we go. So when you look at these different debts, this right here is the most attractive, highest interest rate, highest amount of cash flow gain day one, and a relatively decent balance that can fit in the HELOC that doesn't increase our leverage too much. So we're in September of 2022, as I'm recording this video, working with this client, and here's what they're gonna do. They have money in savings. They have $25,000 in savings. They're taking roughly 10,000 or more of those dollars and they're gonna park it in the HELOC principal, which is gonna bring that balance down from 40 down to 30. As I'm recording this video, when the last time I spoke to them was on September 15th. They have a paycheck coming in that day. This is a bi-weekly uh, salary type of a person. So they receive a pension paycheck because they retired from the police department, but they also still work in the police department, right? So they still have a, a, a job and they receive bi-weekly paychecks. So they got one on the 1st of September. Now they're getting one on the 15th and the next paycheck will be on the 29th, I believe, because this month is a three paycheck month, which is pretty cool. Their pension hits on the 1st of every month. Now for this particular month in September, October 1st falls on a weekend. So they'll actually get paid before that. So they're actually going to get paid in September on the 30th. So there's going to be quite a bit of money coming in for the month of September. And this is the unique in velocity banking which accelerates allows us to go much faster is how we're getting paid when and how the money flows creating that velocity effect we're increasing velocity way faster much faster than having to wait till the end of each month till I have all the cash flow to make a payment towards a debt so 10k cash goes in we got that paycheck 1346.94 boom that goes in brings the balance down to 29,625.06 we have that pension coming in that is technically for october but it hits in september and then that last paycheck and then there's roughly about 3600 dollars left of expenses so that'll bring the ending balance in september end of september somewhere around 28k again person is brand new to Velocity Banking. I want them to get their feet wet. I want them to be dumping money in with their paychecks, taking money out to pay for bills, swiping the card to uh, float interest, right? Float the bills, get the cashback rewards, keep as much money in the HELOC for as long as possible, which lowers my borrowing costs from 4.75 down to below two, below one, right? Very effective. And I typically like to do this for about couple months, three, four months, right? In this case, very conservative, we can project making our first chunk by the end of 2022, say December. So about three, four months conservative, we can make a chunk and we would hit this. By the time we hit this, the balance will actually be a little bit less because you're still making the monthly payments, right? Nothing's changing in that department, you're still paying your bills. It's just the money, the paycheck sits, it parks in the line to reduce the balance and then comes back out to pay bills, 100% of my cash flow that stays in the line is principal, never paying any interest, right? Incredible stuff. So in October, because that pension hit in September, the remaining income of October is 4,393.88, and that comes on the 10th, the 13th, and the 27th. So in this case, bi-weekly, so they have two paychecks, then they have their pension, then they have rental income, all totaling the 8,280.06. So what happens in this, scenario four times a month money goes into the HELOC these four dates they lock it in they know when they get paid they know the first of the month and the tenth of every month rent comes in from rental income pension comes in the only changing dates is the bi-weekly stuff because there's two months out of the year or so where they get paid three times and they get paid every other Thursday so every two weeks lands on a Thursday those dates are always going to be different right changing but nonetheless, they know four times a month, that's my strategy. Money you gotta go in. And then they look at the days that money has to be paid. So that's typically on the first to pay all the rents. Then they have, you know, the loan payments due, all that good stuff. So the expenses, that 6,000 to 2430 is not coming out all at once. It's coming out throughout the month, right? Totaling 6,000 to 2430. So that's why you'll see the number actually goes up because in October a little bit from 28 to 29 just because of the pension right that hit in September so September was like a big gain right went from 40 all the way down to 29 netting out or technically 28 netting out end of October we're at 29 and then it kind of goes back to normal income for 
November, right? All in that one month, 8,280.06, right? In the first, 10th, the 24th, I wrote that out for you guys. Expenses, right? Come out, end of November, boom, 27,818.09. Now, if we were to, you know, look at, okay, is, is now a good time to chunk? Answer would be yes, right? So we can chunk as early as, say, November, or we could wait another month in of doing Velocity Bank a little more comfort. By the end of December, the latest, again, conservative, they can do as early as November, maybe even as early as October. It depends on how good their numbers look. But between November, December is when we want to make that chunk. And by then, after making 787 in September, October, November, right, balance goes down. It's only going to be about a 15 plus K chunk or so, which look how it brings the balance right back up to that 40 number again, right? So if we chunked in December, when the balance is around 25, add the 15 plus thousand or so, balance goes up to 40,862.33. Not bad. Then same thing, income goes in. Now look at the expense number. It dropped by 787.25. This is the big game changer right here when you're comparing velocity banking to Snowball is now I have the whole payment now. If I was just making 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, right? Monthly payments. First of all, you'd have to start here at the 5,000. That's going to take you two and a half months to get rid of that only for $90 in gain. To, and then if you kept in the same route, then you got to jump to this one, 17,368, 437.87 and do snowball there for whatever 17 divided by 2055 plus 90 dollars is plus the 437 to only recapture 7.25 percent but let's say you were comparing the route that we're going 2055.76 in the month of september right make your payment knocks the balance down then october then november again then december by december you still owe money on the loan versus in velocity banking by december or sooner the loan's done it's gone I recapture all of that 12.49% and move it into 4.75. And because we're doing velocity banking, 4.75 becomes what? Less than 2%. We're able to cut that rate in half. And now that 787.25 is now 100% principal sitting in the HELOC. Powerful stuff. So now the only dollar amount net coming out of the HELOC is now that 5,437.05. So when you snowball, you're still at a cash flow of 2055.76 versus me, I'm now at a cash flow of 2055 plus the 787. So $2,900 in cash flow, right? Much higher. So now it's January 2023. Look where the balance is on the HELOC, 38,1932. Income goes in, expenses come out. February, income goes in, expenses come out. No, look how fast that number starts to drop. It's dropping faster than the first chunk we made, right? Because there was less cash flow. Now there's more cash flow. We're simply going faster. So it took us four months, roughly, to make our first chunk. We saved 12.49%. We recapture 787.25. We're paying less than 2% in total interest in this window here. Just four months later, we're getting ready to make that next chunk. What are we chunking at next? This one, not the 17 at 437. Look at this one, not too far off of a balance, 18981 for $618.53 cash flow gain. Interest rates the same, 7.25%. When you factor in making 618, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, balance is gonna be lower, right? You're still making that minimum monthly required payment while all money is going into the HELOC, creating space again. So look, if I chunk 16,700, which will be somewhat around the balance owed on the mortgage, I immediately access the cash flow again, recovering 7.25. I get $618.53, while the snowballer is still lollygagging. They're still making their 2,000 payment, 2,000, 2,000. Here's what I wanna do. Let's take that 17,951 and compare it to Snowball. See how long it takes us to, to pay that off if we just snowballed it. 2,055.76 our cash flow, and then add 787.25. So at 28,4301. Without 
taking out interest. We just simply divide, right? 17, 951, 40 divided by 2,800. Uh, I forgot the number. Say 2,800. It's going to take us roughly six and a half months, right? So September, October, November, December, January, February, right? This is not counting interest, right? 12.49, you're getting smacked. Roughly $200 or more in interest on that, without a doubt. So by March is when you finally recover 787.25 versus velocity banking we got that in january so i'm months ahead now if you went the way you're supposed to do it in snowball you'd be hitting this first then this then that so you would have got hit real hard in interest over here with that money paying nothing in interest just to get 90 dollars to then jump to here to only get 7.25 at 437 by the time you hit this bank already won they already got all their interest they won you're at a loss. So that's why we look at it multi-dimensional. We're considering all the numbers. So by April, Velocity Banking, I make a chunk. I now get 618.53. And look what happens to my expenses now. Now they're at only 4,818.52. Balance goes up to 46. Income goes in, expenses come out. End of May, we're back down to 42. We went all the way up to 46, come back down to 42. June, July, right? So we go one two three four five so typically you'll see my videos every four to six months six to nine months we want to be chunking typically that's how it usually pans out look how perfectly it's lining up with these different chunks so what would be the next chunk boom now we go after the the 1736 mortgage up for the 437 cash flow at the 7.25 that would be that would be the third debt we hit because we're looking at cash flow guys looking at cash flow so then check this out by the time we get to this chunk to hit this debt you, you've been paying 437 for a year from september all the way to september that balance is going to be down so the chunk required is only going to be somewhere around 14,300, maybe even less than that brings the balance back up 43 income goes in expenses come out boom look expense number drops again 4,38865. look how much at this point we are blasting ahead of snowball when you look at the total timeline to become completely debt free snowball can do it for you in 10 to 13 years as opposed to 30 years when you're looking at you know a mortgage when you factor in all the debts right doing snowball say 10 to 13 years velocity banking five to seven obviously the more cash flow we have that number can come down for both snowball and velocity banking so if snowball can get us debt free in seven to nine years well then velocity banking might be able to do it in three to four so you can see how each chunk moves us an additional say three four months and then it becomes now i'm one year ahead now i'm two years ahead now i'm three years ahead now i'm four years ahead and then you factor in all the other extra features and benefits that comes from the snowball world the frugalistic minimalistic world of cutting back reducing expenses we can do all of those things as well in velocity banking those are external factors that improve the overall situation which in the velocity banking world we won't discount we'll we'll, we'll adopt that we're just being more effective, more efficient with our dollars day in and day out. So September, boom, balance goes up. October, right back down again, 39. November, 35. Now, when we finally hit this credit card, it's on 0% for 21 months starting September of 2022. So September to September, that's 12 months. Then you add another, what, nine more months to that. So that's October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So like May, June of 2024 is when that card expires. By the time we get to that, all these done, wham, gone, gone. While snowballers, they're, they're lollygagging still with these debts, right? It's going to take them longer. This would be gone by 2024, June. And we're really not going to even have to pull much out of this from the from the HELOC to take, take care of this. This is like nothing. $90 times 21 months, that balance, this is all principal because on 0%. So when we wipe that out, that's a quick little, you know, 90 bucks. Thank you. This will be on our eyesights. 
is that other debt tool. And that's simple. You know, that's just moving simple interest at 6.74, moving it to 4.75%, and we have plenty of space to do so. And that's a nice gain. That's a real nice gain. 752.82, 21 months later or, or so, this balance is gonna be down much more. The HELOC would be down, right? We're gonna, we're gonna, at this time, we're gonna try and get it down as low as we can to then just do a one, one move, a one sweep. That's how I would handle that one, that HELOC, because of how it's structured as a simple interest. Immediately just move the whole thing in here and immediately start paying over 2% less. Not bad at all. And again, 4.75 becomes less than 2%. And if we want to look at, you know, what, what is our borrowing costs? In this person's case, they're getting 1.5% cash back every single month, which looks like roughly 30 plus dollars or so. Let's go back up to the top here. First month of Velocity Banking. That 29,62506 is when I'll start paying interest. I'm not going to pay interest on 40,972 because I'm making that principal payment and then a paycheck lands. So, so I'm actually only paying 4.75 on 29.62506. So you times it, and then you divide it. So that's three dollars eighty-five cents a day for however long we owe that, which won't be for long because we got these two paychecks coming in. So do this number here: twenty-eight zero four three times four point seven five. We're just trying to get an estimated cost of borrowing. I'm going to add those two numbers up. Divide it by two times 30 days. About $112 or so, give or take. This is an overestimation, guys. Because then you got to minus the cash back rewards. And then understand that we're only paying interest every day on whatever that balance is on that particular day. That's how that works. So if I was just take the $100 and then you look at the, the following months, every month thereafter, the balance goes down. So by the time I get to month four to six, the interest is so low, that's an indication, hey, we need to be getting ready for the next chunk. So that's why you usually always see me say, yeah, every four to six months or six to nine months, make that next chunk. Because by the time you hit month four, month five, month six, you're literally paying nothing in interest because it's now it's being offset by those cashback rewards it becomes zero. So now it costs you zero dollars to hold a debt of say 25K ish. 28, 26,000 doesn't cost me anything to hold that amount of money. So that's like my new zero. That's how I look at that, especially when I'm dealing with a big line with bigger credit lines and higher incomes. I'm like, look, look, we're okay with paying nickels and dimes, quarters and dollars and cents on the first 20, 25K owed on the debt tool. Anything above that is our chunk, 15,000. 14, 3, 16, 7. That is the, re that's really the only interest that gets added on into the debt tool. And then because of where that chunk went, right? Because of where it went, it went to a place that was charging much higher rates. So when you look at it, I'm not paying any new interest. A lot of people get confused. They're like, oh, you know, you're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, you're robbing and now you're you're paying this new interest now you created a new debt i'm like no no new debt was created all i did was move one debt to another location where my money can be applied together stronger right it can be more effective in another location and i'm paying the same interest that i was going to pay in this payment right here this payment was over 200 dollars in interest i move it over here now it's less than a hundred dollars in interest and the cash flow is all principal, so the, the balance gets eliminated. You're literally canceling interest. It's literally what you're doing. Never shows up because of the way the interest is calculated here in simple interest versus amortize. Simple interest needs time to accrue the interest versus amortize, it's already front loaded. So if you eliminate the front load by paying it off, not down each and every month, but paying it off and then moving it into another location, 
and now you need time to accrue interest in that new location. So look how much damage we do in just one year. Three major debts get eliminated, technically four, right? By September, because this will actually get eliminated like in 2024. We're not gonna pay that off any sooner. And then once that is done, then we're looking at that HELOC. That'll be next. And depending on how this person feels, look, and listen, we're more than open. My client and I, we're open to seeking out opportunities to now increase the top line number. Velocity banking tends to focus on the bottom line quite a bit, you know, reducing your expenditures by eliminating debt, right? Eliminating debt, that's awesome. But then we also take into consideration the idea of increasing the top line, which is our income. So if they get to a point a year from now, two years from now, they've eliminated all the debt except for that primary mortgage at 6%, it only costs them 729 16 a month. So they might be saying, you know what, Denzel? Inflation is at over 10%. Taxes are going nowhere but up. Government is acting wild. I'm gonna build a business. I'm gonna create freedom from myself and I'm gonna fight for it by increasing the top line because they now know how to be an effective borrower and a lender that lends to many nations. Oh dear, that allows us to increase our cash flow tremendously. Now that we have the mental fortitude, the disciplines, we're no longer in fear of debt. We don't fear debt in this community. We literally have control and authority and confidence over debt, not through avoidance, but through practical discipline use, strategic use of the debt. We have confidence to own and manage and steward debt effectively and actually use debt to create more income and cash flow reducing our tax liability increasing cash flow right all these different things so this is powerful stuff not bad at all so i'm more than happy when the client comes to me and says you know what the heloc is at you know we got it down to you know twenty thousand or so and i see an opportunity to acquire property right so instead of paying off debt they're going to acquire more debt that creates more cash flow or they're like i want to start a biz i want to start a business that can increase their income by 50%, by 100%. So they 2X from eight to 16,000 a month, which increases their cash flow by 4X. Not bad at all. We're open to that. So that's what I'm saying. We look at this like multi-dimensional. We're looking at all of the different layers. We're looking at all angles, all edges of the whiteboard. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. On this channel, we cover the velocity banking concept, infinite banking, and kingdom authority, bringing faith and finances together, making the logic and the spiritual all make sense. You want to work with me one-to-one? -one? Click the links in the description below where you can check out all the different resources I have in terms of getting all the tools you need to position yourself for financial coaching and consulting more than happy to help you there go to my website denzelrodriguez.com you can check out all my financial services that i provide right primarily i'm a strategist so i'm gonna coach you through we're gonna iron out all the numbers we're gonna take i'm looking at all the numbers down to the penny to see what is our next best move right moving forward how can we be most efficient in what we're doing you can also get into my private community that's the first link in the description below of every single video that i have says join my private community you get invited to the facebook group you can see what other people are doing get some insight there you know if you're broke cash flow is really low i do have a ministry and i have opportunities where you can earn coaching for free all right we don't do handouts here everything is by your works and your faith put together okay your faith and your works come to play here. They come to get maximized here. And then my goal is to build you up so that you can invest in yourself to go even further. So I work with people making as little as 30, 40, you know, thousand a year, single mom, household mom, to people making multiple six figures, even seven figures, all implementing these concepts to accelerate their business finances, their personal finances, just building that inner strength, that mental fortitude around our finances we become masters over our money so check those links if you're not ready keep watching the videos can't tell you how much people are not clients of mine that have become debt free that have built businesses that have increased their cash flow just look at the comments look at the testimonies of the different case studies i always shout these people out i always let them know hey thank you so much for just simply watching what i'm doing and then going and applying it not just watching it for entertainment i'm not in the business to necessarily entertain you i need to keep you engaged so i do look at different things keep you entertained but for the most part 
I want you to transform your mind. I want you to transform the way you look at money. So that's all for now. Have a wonderful day and God bless.